Yeah. Where in the hell has Rennick been? Why did he abandon us? I know not any of you are thinking of that, but I'm sure you're probably like, where'd this guy go? What happened? And this video uh, is important because it's going to highlight my what happened, and it's also going to confirm that I'm out of the fog. And one of the things that I realized uh, towards the end of COVID, um, and even before, way before COVID, was that my relationship with my wife was deteriorating slowly over time. Um, we had uh, sought therapy sessions. Um, we had, you know, done a lot of work on trying to, you know, uncover challenges in our marriage. And listen, marriages are complicated and they require a lot of work. And I was not afraid to put in the work. I was not afraid to do my part. I was not afraid to admit my faults. I was not afraid to do any of that. And believe it or not, um, when COVID happened, um, I'll never, uh, I, I, I never, I never fully comprehended that my marriage couldn't work. Right. I, I had told myself that I had came from a divorced family. My parents got divorced when I was six and that I was going to do everything in my power that I possibly could to make my marriage work. Right. And if I was going to meet St. Peter at the pearly gates and he was going to ask me, you know, what did I do with what I was given? I was going to make sure that I said everything that I possibly could to make my marriage work. And the one thing that I never accepted was that it wasn't. Um, and then something happened and it, it was, it was, my God, I, I remember the video that I posted. I remember all of it. And so I posted the video and if I can uh, attach it in this description, I will, but everything that happened at sign fairies was directed and suggested by women that I'd never met, you know, you should start a YouTube channel. You should start a, a private Facebook group. I mean, these were from people that just were reaching out because they really liked my content at the time. And, um, I remember starting the, uh, private Facebook group and I wanted to post a video letting people know what I didn't want to have happen in my private Facebook group. And here were the things that I said. What I said was, is that if you want to be a member of our private Facebook group, we're not going to talk about conflict or controversy. So this is not the place to talk about the Second Amendment. This is not the place to talk about Roe versus Wade. You can go do that at any other private Facebook group. But for this one, we're not going to talk about things that generate conflict and controversy in any capacity. The second was, if you're going to be a member of this group, you're going to treat everybody with respect and kindness, like you would a family member, regardless of their race, creed, or color. Okay. Everyone is equal. There's no one that's different. And if you disrespect somebody or you're rude or you're racist or any of that, that will not be tolerated. And you will leave this group as quickly as you got in here, if not faster. And then the last one was, listen, listen, this is my group. You know what I mean? And if you don't like any of the stuff that's going on here, you know, you don't have to be a part of it. You can leave. And so those are the three things that I said. And what happened after that is hard to explain. And this is what happened. It's actually not hard to explain, but it's easy to explain. It's just hard to comprehend. But what happened after that is that my um, subscribers on my uh, Sign Fairy channel absolutely exploded. Absolutely exploded. And it overwhelmed me. And I didn't understand why. And 
Um, it wasn't until I reached out to one particular person, Miss LaDonna, um, and she helped me see a lot of things uh, along with another personal close friend of mine about what was happening um, to me. And uh, it's, it's changed my life. It's fundamentally changed my life. Uh, the women in this group did something for me that hadn't happened ever in my marriage. And what it was, was you guys just loved me unconditionally. Maybe not everyone, right? Maybe, you know, I'm, I'm using that term loosely, but I felt loved and respected by many of you, um, a handful of you, Miss LaDonna in particular. Um, by just the way you absorbed my content and many other factors that quite candidly, I'm just not going to get into here. So because of this surge of interest and the surge of interest for my content, which happened to be at the time, really the, you know, some of the only real content out there that was helping, you know, uh, people build businesses in the yard sign community business. Like it just exploded and I couldn't, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't comprehend it. I mean, it was just like, I could, but it was just like, holy cow. And so after I acknowledged that something special was happening and that I had this surge of subscribers that were super excited about my content. Um, I realized that I was, I felt like I was being loved unconditionally by complete strangers um, in many ways. Uh, but most importantly, um, you know, personally, professionally, content wise, things of that nature. And what happened to me was it caused me to reflect, immediately reflect on what was happening in my challenging relationship with my wife. And I'll never forget where I was. I was talking to an old college friend of mine and I was telling him how frustrated I was in my marriage, you know, and, and he said to me and it echoed like, a. I, I just, I remember he said to me, just Rennick, it doesn't really sound like you have a partner. And it's just Rennick, it doesn't really seem like you have a partner. Rennick, it doesn't really seem like you have a partner. And at that time, it was a wake up call. It was a wake up call to the reality that my the person that I married, I mean, there, there's, at, people can do a lot of things, right? But I cannot willingly make you do anything you don't want to do. So if you don't want to change and grow for whatever reason, you know what? You don't. And I realized that I did not want to be with this person anymore. And it was a massive wake up call. And what transpired after that was three years of heartache. And what I realized during this process, I, I moved out of my house, I moved into my camper. Um, you know, what I realized was, is that, um, you know, my, my, my wife got arrested for domestic violence. Um, she had scratched me on my face. Very, you know, not, I mean, like I, it wasn't a gunshot wound, but she scratched me in the state of North Carolina. There's a zero tolerance for that. So, you know, she got arrested and I started uh, seeing a therapist and started learning more about, you know, what not only physical abuse was and i can say 
with all honesty, there was in, never any physical abuse. Like there's many times I wanted to hit her, but I just, I just didn't. There was more emotional abuse. Um, you know, my wife, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't know or realize what gaslighting was. Holy shit. You know, I, I never dreamed that I could be emotionally abused by anyone, you know, let alone my partner. Um, I realized what a narcissist was and what that means and what it's like to be married to one. I just started absorbing content to kind of help me understand um, what I was up against. And when you have someone like that in your life, you know, uh, narcissists are, 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 will never admit that they've done anything wrong ever. Admitting wrong is the equivalent of jumping off a cliff, right? So I was in for a battle and, and, and she put me through one, you know, um, like I said, I moved into my camper. Uh, we sold our house. Uh, she hired an attorney. Uh, I spent a lot of monies on attorneys. And, and then spent so much that I couldn't afford it anymore and had to represent myself and got eviscerated in court. Um, you know, she had got full custody of the kids. Um, you know, I was broke. I didn't have a job. Um, I, um, I moved into this place now. Um, and thankfully, through a miracle, I found a full-time job making half of what I was making before, but I, I just didn't care. I just needed, I needed something. And I wasn't going to get custody of my kids if I lived in the camper. So I needed to move into a place that had rooms that I could have them. And my kids are a completely different story um, that I'm not even going to get into here. But um, I've since filed for bankruptcy. Um, you know, I've gone through uh you know, I learned that, you know, I, I spent a lot of money that I, I probably shouldn't have in hindsight, you know, and, um, you know, uh, it's terrible. I, I want to also be mindful, too, that I'm sure my kids will see this and I don't want to badger their mother here because she's still her mother, but I no longer communicate with her. Um, she has since recently been engaged and thankfully, 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 the person that she, uh, is now engaged to is a good man, a very good man. My parents got divorced. I feel lucky. I can tell you, I had a second father who, uh, my kids love and appreciate and value and, I communicate with him. And since then it's just been great. Okay. Um, but I'm reaching out to all of you to also kind of close the door on all of that. Um, because I'm starting a new project. Uh, I'm putting out a, a podcast. Um, and you know, just over the course of the last month of doing that, it's, it's, become more relevant to me how important all of you who I've never met had on me and you know everything that I did for that YouTube channel for that science fairy channel was to give back to what you guys did like I didn't monetize it I didn't want to monetize it I just didn't I wanted to I wanted you to have it it was the only way that I could really show how grateful I was for all of you. I know it may sound crazy and I'm sure to some of you it, it does, but you know, I, I just, you were too important to me to try to take money from you, you know, and um, that experience has helped me in this one because now as I'm getting ready to launch this next one, I want to make sure I have everything I, in place so that I can monetize it because I deserve that. And I'm looking at it differently now. Um, 
but I'm, I'm here to say thank you. I'm here to say I'm grateful. I'm here to say that, you know, like I, I'm, I'm really lost for words. I'm really, really lost for words. Um, you probably would get a little emotional, but you know, look, when people that you've never met have such a profound impact on your life, it's hard to really put into words how grateful you are, you know? And so I want you to know that this next venture that I'm going on, I, I'm God, believe it or not, I'm going to be 53 tomorrow. I'm single, happily single. I have a dog, Butch. I have an Australian cattle dog who loves me unconditionally. It's the greatest thing I've ever had. Gavin has moved out. Um, we're working on getting more time in custody with my other two boys. And I have the time now and the emotional wherewithal to put forth effort into something new. And that I'm excited about I don't know what's going to happen. I didn't know what was going to happen with sign fairies. But I know enough to know this, that if I put in the work, you know, if I just do the work, I'll be able to accept whatever the outcome is. And I can tell you that I'm, I'm really excited about this one. And this one is, this one has, the silver lining is, there are a lot of men, I believe, out there today in my generation, Generation uh, X, and even some in uh, the millennials and, and maybe even a little bit younger that, you know, grew up in a world where, you know, dad kicked open the front door from work and walked in and, you know, grabbed a beer in the fridge and sat down. And if he wasn't having a good day, none of us were, you know, a lot of us didn't talk about our feelings. We stuffed them, right. Men aren't supposed to talk about their feelings. Men aren't supposed to share what's going on uh, with them. I didn't know what was going on with me. I'm sure other men don't know either. And this next um, this next project is going to be about um, it's going to be about men who were in similar situations as I was in, you know, and and what that means, and not necessarily, you know, bulldoze through that, but like. I'm going to share with you and others how I worked through this challenging time um, because it was the hardest thing I've ever done. I can honestly tell you um, that I, I mean, if, it, if you know what it's like to be burnt, you know, like you burn yourself on your hand, it, it hurts. I mean, it just, it hurts all day, you know, and I've never, you know, been burnt all over my body but when I tell you that I hurt so much for such a long period of time, I just couldn't move without being in pain or agony. And I got Butch because Butch is a, a person dog. And when he latches onto you and he says that, you know, he's, I'm his person, you know, he will run through a wall for you. And he loves me unconditionally and I don't have to do anything but feed him and love them too. And I just needed that and still do. So this is a testament to uh, all of you to let you know that um, I apologize for not being able to give you more or give you any reason why I left and what happened. But now I'm telling you that I'm capable of doing that and I want to do that. And that's what this video is, but I'm moving on. And, um, great things are coming. Um, and, um, you know, if you wanted to be a part of it, you know, you certainly can, um, I'll provide more information to all of you later, but just know from the bottom of my heart, all of you have had an impact on me in some way, shape or form. And I'll forever be grateful for that. And what you taught me um has changed my life and the way I view the world differently. And 
I owe it to you to share that with you. So there you go. And um, that's it. That's all I got. I want to make it short and I want to make it sweet. I want to get it out there. And um, obviously if you got any comments or whatever, you can put them in the, in the video or, or whatnot, and I'll get back to you on it. But um, thank you. Thank you for, thank you for me. Thank you for my kids. And um, the best is yet to come. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon.